In this lecture, we will start learning about the sources of B fields, or source of magnetic fields. <sighs> All right, so uh, a B field is essentially a source by a moving charge. So let's imagine that I have a charge, Q, and is moving in this direction with some velocity v. And I want to basically measure the magnetic field that this charge will generate at point P. Right? So let me write down this equation first. Right? B is equal to mu naught over 4 pi Q V vector cross R hat over R squared. Okay, so let's basically go through each, what each one of these things mean, right? So um, the R vector is the vector that goes from the charge to the point of interest. So this is R vector, right? And R hat is just a unit vector in that direction, okay? And R is just the magnitude of it, which is essentially the distance between point charge Q and point P, okay? Um, this mu zero, okay, this is a special value, it's actually four pi times 10 to the minus seven. And let's get the uh, units right. So Q times V is gonna be a current, so that's in amps. There's, um, right now Q, yeah, this is uh, a meters here, there's a meters over here. So this unit is gonna be Tesla, meters over amperes right and this is called this uh, value here is mu zero is called the permeability of free space okay as it turns out kind of like the permittivity free space is epsilon zero this thing th could vary um, in different materials, right? But unlike uh, the perm permittivity, which is epsilon, this thing doesn't vary much, right? So for, by and large, if you have the permeability of free space, it's true for all materials as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, do a example here, right? Let me imagine that I have a charge, uh, let's see, moving, with some velocity, v. I always set this velocity something 10 to the 5 meters per second, right? Okay. Uh, and, let's see what I want to say here. And this charge is going to be some electron, say. Uh, do I have an electron? No, maybe make a positron, something like that. All right, so some proton. Let's make a proton there. Yeah. So the proton is moving, okay? And, uh, I'm going to basically be interested in seeing the amount of uh, magnetic field generates at point P, where this is basically one meter away, and at some angle of theta relative to the direction of motion. Right. Okay, so in this case, let's write down that B is equal to mu zero over four pi Q V cross R hat over R squared. All right, so we're just kind of interested in getting, well, we're going to get the direction later, but first let's compute the magnitude, all right? So this is V cross R hat, right? This is R, so V cross R hat is going to be V sine theta, so it's going to be mu zero over four pi. Q is the charge of a proton, that's 1.6 times 10 to the minus um, 19, okay? Of V is the velocity, that's 10 to the 5, okay? V cross R hat, that's just going to give you a sine theta here, right? And then this is just all divided by R squared, which is just 1 meter squared, okay? So if you go ahead and uh, compute this thing out, uh, lo and behold, mu 0 over 4 pi, it's 4 pi up here, the 4 pi is canceled, it's 10 to the minus 7, right? Um, 
So if we do all this, let's see, 10, this is 10 minus 7, 10 to 5, 10 to minus 2. So that's basically uh, 1.6 times 10 to minus 21. Sorry. Sine theta Teslas. Right. Now let's get the direction of this thing. Well, let's see. So it's V cross R. So use the right hand rule, right? So it's my right hand here. Okay. Like V points along the direction, so my thumb points the direction of V. My fingers point to the direction of R hat. So if you do that, the thumb is this way. The fingers are pointing in the direction of R hat. And the arrow sticking your palm points into the page. There's the B field. It points into the page right there. Okay. All right. So this is great. Okay. But usually we care about more than one charge. So let's, let's look at this for more than one charge. Look at this. For greater than one charge. Okay. So to make this more concrete, let's imagine I have a number of charges. Each one is a charge Q moving with velocity V in some direction, right? Then in that case, this is relatively easy, right? So this thing could just be summed up. V is going to be equal to mu zero over four pi times the sum of Q V cross R hat over R squared, all right? Now, What's interesting about this is that basically, if you take a sum of the of the uh, of the charges times the velocity, the sum of the charges times the velocity, what was that? That's just basically if you have a large number of these things, like the integral of v dq, right? That's going to be equal to i times l, where l is the direction of motion, right? And so another way of writing this thing, right, would be that V, which is also equal to integral of dB vector, right, that's equal to the integral of mu zero over four pi, right, uh, I dL cross R hat over R squared, okay? Oh, so basically there's two way of writing, one way to write like integral, the other way is right like this, differential form, dB equals mu zero over four pi, I dL cross R hat over R squared. And both of these things go by a special name. This is the uh, law of Bio Savart. Okay, so we can use this thing, right? So this is going to be some integral along basically where the currents are flowing, right? So now you can convert this to basically imagining just a single charge or a charge moving in series. You could basically base it for any current you want, right? So let's basically do a few examples of this, right? So the first thing we do is the B field. current loop, right? So let me imagine I have a uh, current loop here. Oh, basically uh, apply some um, uh, current through this thing. And off the center of this object at point P, which is a distance x away, I want to care. I want to look at what the B field is at that point, right? So let's go ahead and figure this out. So the B field is equal to integral of mu zero over four pi i dl cross r hat over r squared, right? That's again the law of field so far. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let's imagine I have a point here. And I'm going to basically draw my vector there, okay? And uh, let me look at basically uh, what this thing will look like, all right? So if I go ahead and try to compute dl, right? So dl is in this direction, say, okay? Cross r hat, 
okay? So that means basically I use my right hand here. My right hand is going to be pointed along DL. My fingers are going to point along the direction of the radial of the vector that connects the, my, the point I care about to, the, to this thing. And basically what you end up getting is you end up getting a component of the B field is in this direction. That's where the B field looks like, right? For this point here, okay? And if I spin this around, as I go around, this thing will spin around with me. And what will happen is that basically, there'll be two components. There'll be a component basically, which is in the plane of the coil. And there will be a component which is, which is along the axis, right? And as you can see, what will happen is that the plane, which is along the, uh, which is um, in the plane of this, this perpendicular component to the axis will cancel each other out. And all you're left with is basically um, the component which is along the x direction, all right? So basically, we just need to care about this one, along the x direction. So in fact, all this stuff is really not that necessary, right? Because ultimately, all I care about is basically the B field that's along the x direction, right? So in this case, so dx is equal to integral of mu zero over four pi, I DL cross R hat dot that all with the X hat direction divided by R squared. Okay. Now, one other thing we should take note is that basically this DL is at a right angle, right? Because this is moving in out of the page essentially there. That's a right angle. Uh, this B field will be at the right angle as well. So in fact, this thing just has no normalizations that we care about, right? But what we do care about, however, is basically this the dot with the x hat right there, right? So let's go ahead and uh, figure out what this thing uh, might look like, all right? So um, if I think about this, all right, uh, this here is going to be some angle theta. This is at 90 degrees, right? This is a cross product, right? And this is basically, if I go all the way here, this is the angle I care about. I call this basically angle phi, right? Because that's the direction I care about, right? And so, this first of all, we can write that this thing is going to be integral of mu zero over four pi i dl cross r hat dotted with x hat, sorry. Um, well, I should re rewrite this. Way. Let me just rewrite it this way, okay? So this is just going to be integral of mu zero over four pi i dl. I don't worry about x hat anymore, right? For r squared, this dot of x hat gives me the cosine of phi. <coughs> now, the cosine of phi is what? Well, this angle phi, <coughs> phi is equal to, well, this is 180 degrees, so it's pi minus pi over 2, that's this angle right here, plus theta. So this is basically pi over 2 minus theta. <coughs> so this can be equal to integral of mu zero over four pi i, all right, uh, dl over r squared cosine of pi over two minus theta. All right, so let's look at what that means, okay? Uh, we'll draw a picture again. Right, just to make sure we understand where everything's going from. There I am. There I am at point at point P, which is <laughs> x away. Okay. This is R. That's theta. This here is phi. This is a right <laughs> angle right here. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, B X. I'll write that down one more time. Integral of mu zero 
over 4 pi i dl over r squared okay cosine pi over 2 minus theta this thing here is just the sine of theta theta all right and so once we have this i might just have to stop for a second so drink a chair drink of water okay so like i said this is sine of theta and so what's sine of theta sine of theta well this is just i forgot to draw this part in this is has a radius uh, r here sine of theta is basically is um, uh, the, the, this part divided by the hypotenuse, right? So sine of theta is just basically r divided by this thing right here is just the square root of r squared, right? Right triangle plus x squared. Okay, and then we're almost done, right? So we know what this r is. This is this direction here. That's just basically. Uh, uh, the length of R, right? Okay, and so let's just write put everything together. Okay, so it's R equal to square root of R squared plus X squared, right? And now we're done, right? So this is a uh, dx is equal to mu zero over four pi. Okay, this I there. Okay. Um, there is a r, so let's write that down. That's going to be r squared. So r squared plus x squared. Good. Okay, that's this piece right there. There's a sine of theta, which is r over square root of r squared plus x squared. Good. All right. And now there's an integral dl. All right. And I could do this. All right. Because all these things are constants, right? X is a constant, R is a constant, right? These are constants. I'm going to go with DL. What's DL? DL is basically the length around the circle. This object here is just 2 pi times R. And so we are now finished. Okay. This is going to be equal to um, <coughs> I'll write like this. Uh, mu zero over two, the two pi will kill off the four pi, i over uh, r squared plus x squared. This entire thing has three halves power, okay? And then this one has an r times r, it's r squared on top, okay? So that is basically the B field from a, from a, <coughs> from a single current loop. Right. Now, uh, there's something interesting that happens at x equals 0. So for x equals 0, that means it moves it all the way to the middle of that uh, wire coil. In that case, you get something pretty simple then. Uh, B of x is going to be equal to I, I'll write it like this, over, um, let's see, so there's I over, I'm oh, sorry, so there's a mu 0, I over 2. Okay, and this is r squared, and this is r squared plus zero, r squared, so the three halves of r cubed over two r. Okay, now, uh, Okay, so that's the current loop. Right. So next, let's do another example, right? This was the simplest example, right? And as we learned basically from, um, uh, from previously, a lot of times basically these current loops are a lot simpler than a long wire. So let's go ahead and do the, the B field of a long wire. All right. So to do this, let's basically consider the following, all right? I have a long wire, SL, right? I'm considering a point P, 
which is some distance r away from this long wire. I'm going to send this current flowing in this direction. There's my current. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out what the B field at that point P would be. All right? Now the thing is like there's lots of positions that contribute to this B field, right? Oops, sorry, I should point this way. No, is this, this no? Sorry, sorry, point this way. Okay. All right. Uh, so we'll just consider one of them at a time and we'll just build up from there, right? So this has some small, small differential in length, dl here, right? And this is the x-axis. So this dl will eventually become dx, right? So let's write down what db is. We'll write the dl savant law in differential form. The b is equal to mu zero over four pi, right? Um, I dl vector cross r hat over r squared. Right. Okay. So, ooh, ooh. let's go ahead and take a look what this thing looks like. Okay. Uh, so to make this thing a little more concrete, I'm gonna put x equals zero here, and then this will be a position x here. Say. Okay. And this is gonna be our vector. All right. Okay. So. This can be equal to mu zero over four pi i. Okay, so if that's r, okay, um, how I want to do this? Right, I will do it like as follows, right? So r vector is going to be equal to, let's see, well, there's two pieces. First thing is going to go from this point to this point. So that's going to go from minus x, x hat. So it goes go in this direction once, and then it has to go basically. Um, I'll write this like plus r y hat. All right, so we'll call this the direction of the y. It's not going to matter in a second. All right. Okay, that's good. And so once we have that, we can write what r is going to be. r is going to be x squared plus r squared square root of this thing. Right? It's a right triangle again. Right? It's a right triangle. Okay, good. So that's r hat. Now dl vector. Well. That's just this tiny bit, bit here, so that's just dl times x hat, right? So we can basically put this all together now. This is going to be, dl is going to be um, uh, uh, dl x hat, okay, divided by r squared is just this thing squared. That's x squared plus capital R squared, good. And now, this is cross r hat, right? Well, let's write down what r hat is going to be. Well, r hat is going to be this object here, which is going to be, so this is the cross times um, minus x, x hat plus r, y hat divided by the normalization here, x squared plus r squared. Okay? All right. So now, you can see what happens x cross x will give you zero. The only other place that gives you not zero is x cross y. So it's going to be equal to mu zero over four pi uh, i dl, okay, over, now this is going to be, this is going to be uh, x squared plus r squared to the three halves power, good. And then the only one that mattered was that this r, this y hat component, so it's going to be basically r z hat, okay? So that is basically db vector, right? And so now, if we want all of it, we have to integrate this entire thing. And what do we integrate? Well, we're going to integrate along the wire, so that's dx, Right, and we will integrate basically. Um, what's the best way of doing this? Uh, make sure I get this right. From minus infinity to infinity. All right. Okay. Good. Um, all right. 
So to do this integral, okay, I'm doing it with respect to dx, you need some funny trig identity. And in terms of the trig identity I want is the following. So I'm going to set that I'm going to let x equals r tangent theta. And so dx is equal to r secant squared theta d theta. All right? Okay, so let's basically write this thing down. So this is the d field. It's going to be the integral db, which is mu0 over 4 pi. Pull the constants out for a second. Uh, I is another constant. Pull that out as well. All right, and then that's it. I'm stuck. Okay, so now all the z hats. Well, all right, z hats can pull out as well. Integral of, basically, so this is the r up here. That's going to be a uh, r right there. dx r secant squared theta, so the r squared secant squared theta, d theta, good, divided by, now this one is going to be r squared plus r squared tangent squared theta, right, r squared um, times, uh, let's see, I said tangent squared theta, plus r squared to the 3 halves, okay? This thing in here is just r squared secant squared theta again. But this is 3 halves, so it's the r cubed secant cubed theta, right? So this is equal to, okay, uh, mu 0 over 4 pi i z hat. Now the integral is going to be, um, 1 over r, okay, 1 over secant theta, d theta. This 1 over secant theta is just cosine theta, right? So it's going to be equal to mu0 over 4 pi i z hat over r cosine theta, d theta, integral from. Now let's get the signs right, let's get the, the limits right. So it can be it's minus infinity to infinity in dx. That's equal to theta equal to minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Right? Minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay? Sorry. should put that a little more clearer. Okay. Okay, so once we have that, I wonder if this is, yeah, okay. Once we have this, okay, we can do this integral. So this becomes sine of theta, right? Sine of theta at pi over 2 is 1 minus sine of theta of minus pi over is minus 1, so it's 1 minus minus 1, that's basically uh, 2. So it's going to be equal to, let's write this thing down, um, mu 0 i over 2 pi r. Okay, in the z hat direction, which means that this thing is pointing out of the page, right? So it's going to be x, y, r, points right out of the page. Okay, beautiful. <clears throat> now, um, law of Beer Savart is quite interesting, right? But the, as you see, that one got pretty complicated, right? So let's consider another one, right? Um, Okay, so let's re let's do let's do a uh, do an infinitely uh, long solenoid. All right, so I'll draw a picture of a solenoid. It's a bunch of wires like that, a bunch of coils, and it's infinitely long, right? And these things are all basically uh, r in size, right? And I care about basically, uh, well, how do I want to say this? Um, over some length l, there are n coils, right? Okay. 
I can't say how many coils in total, right? That's infinite because it's an infinite long coil. Right. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this then, all right? Um, So for one co for one coil Okay, well let's just figure out how we do it first. Well let's imagine I have a point here. Okay. And I'm gonna basically sum up all the components for all the different coils that I have to this point, right? So basically the B field at P is integral of all the B fields from each one of these coils, right? And I know what the B field for each one of these coils are. I figured out that last time, right? So from last time, well, not last time, but just a second ago, uh, Bx is equal to, all right, uh, I, wait, mu zero over Two i r squared divided by r squared plus x squared to the three halves power, right? Okay. And so basically, if these coil, if this is position at some position x equals zero, and these coils are at different positions, I could figure out what this thing looks like, right? Okay. So. I have to sum up over each one of these things. So I just convert this into a, um, how am I write this? I'll convert this into a dBx, and this becomes a di. So this is just basically b uh, mu zero over two integral of r squared over r squared plus x squared to the three halves power times di. Okay, so now you just gotta figure out what the I has to look like, okay? All right, so if I have these N coils over length L, the I, if I'm just at, at a single position here, X, I can make a slice there, the D I encounter is gonna be equal to I times N over L, this is basically I is the current flowing per coil, the n coil divided by L times dx, right? So this is the coil density times dx, right? N over L is something simple. I can write as n i dx, right? N is equal to capital N over L, right? Okay, so now I can go ahead and solve this thing here. Let's go ahead and do that, right? Uh, let me just start it right here then, okay? Good. Um, let's see, I want to write this as then, um, B is equal to integral mu zero over two r squared over r squared plus x squared to the three halves power. Okay, and di was just this one. This could be n i dx, right? Okay, so let's just basically factor all those stupid constants out first. This is basically mu zero. Uh, R squared is a constant, good. Okay, I is a constant, N is a constant, good. Uh, two is a constant, awesome, all right. Integral now of dx divided by R squared plus x squared to the three halves power, right? Okay, and so what I need to do is I need to solve this one, right? Unfortunately, I just did, just did solve this one, right? The trick was the left x equals r tangent theta and dx equals r secant squared theta d theta, right? Okay, so if I do that, this just becomes mu zero r squared i n over two Okay, integral of, see, so this is r secant squared theta d theta divided by, this one becomes r cubed, as we just discussed, secant q 
cube theta d theta and it goes from basically minus infinity to infinity, infinite law. That means it goes from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, an angle. Right? The way to think about this is this angle is basically, uh, if I'm looking at this position, uh, let's say this is x right here, it's this angle right here. That's the angle. Right? So you can imagine as the angle basically becomes, whoops, 90 degrees, basically it goes all the way out to infinity, right? Okay. <coughs> so let's go ahead and do this one. This is going to be um, mu zero r squared i times n divided by 2, all right? This one, as we discussed earlier, secant squared theta over secant cubed, that's 1 over secant theta, which is cosine theta, right? So, and basically this is 1 over r squared, integral cosine theta, d theta, minus pi over 2, to pi over 2. This becomes sine theta, divided by pi over 2, minus, minus uh, sine of mi minus pi over 2, which is minus 1. So it's 1 minus minus 1. This eventually, the whole thing goes to 2. Right? And so now we're done. Just kill that off. And so we have something pretty simple now. This is basically mu zero n times i. Okay. All right. So that was a very very nice result. Okay. Um, but it was complicated. Okay. So is there an easier way? And the answer is yes. All right? Okay? And so I'm going to discuss something called Ampere's Law. All right? So Ampere's Law goes something like this the integral over some closed curve of B field dot DL is equal to mu zero times IC. Where this is the, uh, so this is basically C is some closed curve. And I C is the uh, current flowing through surface bounded by C. Let me give you an example of what this looks like pictorially. Okay, but this is super important. This is essentially the Gauss's law of magnetism, right? We just looked at the B law of B Savart, which is essentially something like um, uh, the Coulomb's law for magnetism. Now we're looking at basically um, Gau the Gauss's the Gauss's law version for magnetism. Okay, so let's go ahead and basically discuss how we do this. Okay, so if you have some B field. Right? Um, you have some B field here. It's pointing this direction and that direction, and that direction, essentially. You can write a closed curve C around it. Okay? This is a closed curve C. It moves in this direction. Right? Then, when closed curve C, what it does is basically it contains a surface, right? Because it's closed curve, it will contain a surface. And say some current will flow through it. This current is IC. It's the current that basically flows through the surface defined by um, uh, uh, the surface S, which is bounded. Oh, sorry. So this is basically, there's a, some current that flows through it. This um, current IC is the surface that flows through this region, which is bounded by C. Okay. All right. So, in order for making this work, let's write down Ampere's law again. Equal to mu zero, I C, right? Okay, so generally what you need is that there's a left hand side, right hand side. You generally need the left hand side to do it easy. Although you can't do it, right? That's totally useless, right? 
And generally, basically, what this means is this left hand side is usually a constant. So usually, uh, Ampere's law, using Ampere's law, will require B to be constant. Not always. There is examples where this is a, not the case, but it has to be simple, right? Otherwise, you can't do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do a few examples of this, right? So if this is true, right, um, then what this implies is that for constant B, not necessarily um, the, the direction B is constant, but for constant B, what we have is that basically uh, B will pull itself out, integral of that TL over point C is just basically B times LC is equal to mu zero IC. And this is the length of curve C. Okay. So let's go and take an example of this, right? We'll take the example of an infinitely long wire. Now we just did this example and it was not that easy, right? We had to basically write down Bo sub r for every point and then integrate from basically minus x equals infinity to basically x equals minus infinity to x equals infinity, right? Okay. All right, but we can do something much simpler. So first of all, let's write down the answer, right? So let's imagine, okay, I'm infinitely on wire here. There's some I flowing along this direction, right? Okay. Okay, so now the law of, so let's recall from B L that that um, B is equal to mu zero i over two pi r. Okay. All right. So let's do the same thing, but now use Ampere's law. Okay. So let's write down Ampere's law again. Uh, integral b dot dl over some curve c is equal to mu zero i c. All right. Okay. So. If we do that, let's imagine, let's draw in a curve, and to pick the curve, I'll pick something else. I'll draw a circle around it. And this circle will have a certain value. It will have a radius um, r here, say. Okay? All right, so that's my circle, all right? And now I have to go through each one. So first of all, I have to argue the left-hand side has to be some constant, all right, or something simple. Otherwise, I can't do it, all right? And the way you do it is that you just look at the symmetry right. If you spin this circle around, it's always the same problem, basically, right? And so what that means is that basically um, B in magnitude is at least a constant. And, and what happens is that it's also circular, it is also somewhat in the direction of the, of the direction of the circle, right? So what that means is this thing here becomes something simple. That's just basically B integral of C dl, which is just b times lc. Okay, well what's lc? lc is the length of the circle around, which is circumference. So that's basically b times 2 pi r. Okay, what's that equal to? That has to be equal to mu zero ic. What's ic? ic is, is the current flowing through the surface defined by this thing. So there's my surface. What's the current flowing through? Well that's just i here. Okay, so it's mu zero times i. And so basically we solve for b now. That b implies that b is equal to um, mu zero i over 2 pi r. Now look at that. Exactly the same answer, all right? But this was far, far simpler to do. Now the only thing you can't get is the direction, right? Because that's just not obvious here, right? So to get the direction, you use the right-hand rule, right? So to get direction, use right
right hand rule. Okay, so you take your right hand. Okay, take this right hand. Thumb points in the direction of the current. The fingers now curl around and give the direction of the beef. So you imagine the right hand is this way. There's my thumb. My fingers are curling. Okay, like as is. Okay, and then what that means is the B field must be pointing out of the page on the top of the board. So basically, it points out. And I flip it to the other side. I flip it to the other side of that. Then it's going to point in on this side. Right? And so basically, that gives you the entire thing that you need. Okay. So, this is a very powerful thing. We could do it for a lot of different uh, um, uh, uh, things now, okay? Uh, let's see how I want to do this now. Uh, yeah, so, so I'll do three examples of this, all right? And that will be basically the uh, gist of um, Ampere's law. Really, really, really powerful. Very similar to Gauss's law. You gotta get the hang of it basically in order to make it work, all right? So let's do the first one, okay? The first one is, let's imagine I want to solve the B field inside a wire, right? Okay, so, B field inside of wire, okay? And so to make this thing work, basically what's going to happen is that um, here's my wire here. I'll give this a certain radius. R, okay? Right. Now, for if I draw my Amperian curve now, it's kind of like Gaussian surface, but now it's a curve, say. There are two possibilities, right? One possibility is I draw the Amperian, surf, Amperian curve outside. The other possibility is I draw it basically inside the wire as well. Okay? So I can consider two cases here. So for R greater than capital R, okay, well, we have integral of B dot DL is equal to, well, the same thing, right? You can spin this thing around as much as you want, and you spin it around, it's always pointing in the same direction. So B itself has to be constant, so it's basically be B integral of DL around curve C. This is going to equal to mu zero IC, okay? Now for this one, it's easy, right? Uh, if the current flowing through the entire surface is I, then I'm done, all right? Because now this is going to be equal to mu zero I, right? Because this I, the current flowing through this entire surface defined by the big circle outside, is just going to be I, all right? And this one's basically the same thing I had before. This is just 2 pi times R, okay? And so you have B field is equal to mu zero I over 2 pi R. So that's the first one. Okay. Now you can use the right hand rule to figure out the direction. We won't worry about that now. Now this other possibility is R less than R. Okay, so inside of this thing. Okay. Well, in that case, basically, we only have a, some small fraction of the current flowing through here, not the entire current. Now, in reality, what happens is that's not true. The current in conductors tend to stay in the outside and stuff, and so then I'm working with. But we have a pretend situation where we imagine that the current is like a pipe and the water or the current flows through the entire pipe. Okay? So let's basically do this example now. Right? So for R less than R, what do we have? Well, we have basically the same thing again. It's going to be basically B um, type integral of DL, C. That's going to be basically B times 2 pi R. Okay? Now it's going to be because of the right hand side mu zero i c and just like gauss's law okay when you have this the right hand side is the hard part this is easy this is the hard part okay so let's figure out what that is well i have some fraction of the surface there right so it's going to be basically mu let's get the surface charge surface current density so the entire current divided by the entire surface of this thing that's pi capital r squared times basically the surface inside of it pi little r squared, okay? It's going to be basically mu zero, r squared over capital R squared, the pi's cancel each other out, is equal to b 
times 2 pi r, and so then we're done. This is going to be equal to uh, b is equal to uh, mu zero i, oh, don't forget the i there, okay, i r over capital R squared. And don't forget two pi there either. Okay. Good. All right. So that's basically two of them, right? Now, let's do one more, or let's do two more, actually, okay? So now we're going to do the solenoid. Now, the solenoid was, like, really hard in deal so far, because technically what you had to do was that we had to compute the B field for a single loop at a point that is X away from the center of that loop. Then we had to take all those loops and integrate them from basically my, x equals minus infinity to infinity, right? So that's actually quite a bit of work here, right? Let's see if we can do this in a much more simpler way, right? So let's just imagine I have a solenoid. Solenoid is a bunch of wires going around, but I'm going to draw it slightly differently. I'm going to draw like a cross section of these wires. So basically, up here, the, the current all is all flowing outward. And down here, basically, all currents all flowing inward. And I'm going to tell you, basically, that um, this thing has a density n per L, which means, basically, n is equal to capital N over L, right? It's the number of turns per unit length, all right? Okay, so let me pick an appropriate um, uh, Amperian's curve. And the curve I'm going to pick is it's not a circle. It's going to be a rectangle. It's going to look something like this. There's my rectangle, okay? And there are th there are three part there are four parts to this rectangle. There's part one, part two, part three, and part four. Okay? And I'm gonna make basically a flow in this direction. Right? As I integrate along the curve. Right? So the integral of B dot DL, this is basically where uh, it just can't be a constant anymore. It consists of four parts. Integral along one plus integral along two plus integral along three plus the integral around four. Okay? All right. All right, so uh, let's basically do each one of these uh, in turn, all right? Um, so let's see, how do I write, how do I want to do this? Um, all right, so let's do the integral along one, right? So this is going to be some B field, right? Ah, here's how we are. This is going to be some B field, all right? And what's going to happen is that this B field is going to be some B field, hopefully, which is constant, because if it's not constant, I can shift this solenoid back and forth, and if it's not constant and varies along X, what happens is that then basically, it, if I shift it, I'll move those places around. But if I do, and look at the problem, it's the same problem that I read again. And so this has to be constant. So this thing, which is the B times the length along one. So I'll just call this one um, L, say, all right? So this is that one. Two is basically, is there a B field along here? And what happens is that if you do the right hand rule for each one of these things, right, on this side of it, like where the current is pointing out, on one side it's pointing up, on the other side pointing down, they'll cancel each other. So basically for two, it'll be zero, and for four, it'll be zero again, okay? Now we're left with three. For three, three's a little tricky. You might think there's some field here, but let's imagine I draw the following gal Ampere surface all the way around, okay, to the bottom. And in this case, what happens, the current is going in the, on top, current is going 
the uh, co coming up from the from the top. The current is going in on the bottom, and so what happens? The net current going through is zero, and so basically this will also give me a mu zero, so give me another zero again, right? So this can't have any any B field source to it. So there's no B field outside, and so we're left with that. So that was nice. Right? So I get that part, right? I said the left hand side has to be easy, right? Then that's, that's, does that mean the same as constant? This is going to be equal to basically mu zero times I C. Okay, what's I C? Well, that's just basically the number of the amount of current flowing through here, and that's going to be given by essentially um, mu zero, the number density of current, the length of the solenoid of the of the, of the Ampere surface, okay, uh, times basically the current flowing through each one of these uh, coils. All right. So once I have that. I can basically put this together. This implies that B is equal to, the L's will cancel each other out, uh, mu zero and I. Look at that, right? What took basically two or three pages previously now can be done very, very quickly. Last thing, let's do one more, uh, but slightly more complicated example, right? This will be a uh, torus. Okay. Now, torus is kind of funny, all right? Um, let me draw you what the torus looks like. Torus is a donut, essentially. So let's see, i will get this right here. Okay, and we'll wrap some wires around this thing. There's my, there's my, there's my, there's my donut there. Okay, now I'm gonna take a slice of this thing. All right. So I take a slice and look down upon it. I basically see two pieces of it. And on one side, I'm gonna see a bunch of current flowing into out of the page, say. And the outside will flow, see a bunch of stuff flowing into it. Okay. And this will have two radii, okay? Inner radii is gonna be uh, pointed out here, A. And the outer radii is gonna be B, say, for instance, all right? Okay. And so, if I construct my Ampere surface and my, my Ampere curve, I can basically construct my curve several ways. So first I could basically do a curve out here. Okay? I can do a curve well inside of it, and I could do a curve in between. Right? Okay? And for the curve outside, so for um, let's call this uh, uh, R say, for R greater than B, what well, sorry, little b that is, alright? What happens in that case is that basically you compute the Ampere, the Ampere curve uh, inside the surface, basically equal numbers of currents are going in and out, right? So basically in that case, IC equals zero, that means B equals zero, okay? For R less than A, same thing, basically IC equals zero, not because equal and opposite cancel, but because there literally is nothing in there, right? So that's also zero, that implies again B equals zero there as well. So now, only in between the two is something relevant. So for A less than R less than B, right? Then what we have is we have that uh, mu zero, wait, hold on, I'll just do it right. Integral of B dot DL is equal to, well, it's some constant D, because you could just turn this thing around, times basically LC is equal to, now, uh, mu zero, I C, okay? What's L C? Well, this is just basically the length of that circle there, so that's gonna be equal to B times two pi R is equal to mu zero, uh, I C. Well, what is that? That's just basically the number of turns that I, I compute in here, right? So the N times I, okay? And so we're done now. B is equal to mu zero, whoops, mu zero, and I over 
q pi r. Okay? Now, if you want to find the direction, well, you basically just use your right hand rule, right? It's coming up on the inside and it's curving this way. So the B field is going to be flowing in this direction, right? Okay. So uh, that's it for, yeah, that's it for basically sources of B field and Ampere's law, right? Hopefully, uh, I'll see you all next time.